All right, everybody, how's it going? You are now listening to Uncontested with Robin Mania. I hope you are having a good Friday. It is January 11, 2019, and today we have a couple topics we'd like to discuss. We're going to go over all the NFL division around playoff games, and we'll give our debate on who we think will win each game. We actually are going, we have different picks for the sake of the show. Um, and then, of course, uh, we are going to go over should uh, certain penalties like pass interference be challengeable by coaches, which is something that's being mulled around and discussed in NFL circles about a potential rule change for next year, which would, you know, kind of further aid offenses and further aid. De- you know, it actually doesn't aid offenses. It would kind of give a little pushback against the quarterback and wide receiver happy league that we have right now. And also... We will then discuss where Antonio Brown will be traded if he is, in fact, traded. Um, Does that sound good to you today, Mania? Yeah, that does sound good today. All right, all right. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the first topic, which is going to be the divisional round playoff games. And we're going to go in order of which the games games will be on. So we're going to go ahead and start with the Colts versus the... Kansas City Chiefs. The game will be played in Indian, uh, not in Indy. It'll be played in Kansas City. The Colts are the underdog going into this game, is what I meant to lead with. Um, the game will be played uh, Saturday at four o'clock. And uh, who you got, Mania? Uh, I got the Colts winning this game. Oh, why is that? Why is that? Well, one because of all this year, like all the rookie quarterbacks have. Uh, been kind of doing not that well and plus that this is an Andy Reid team and they kind of choke into playoffs with Andy Andy Reid's the coach so that kind of combined doesn't really look that well for the Chiefs even though it's a home game and they've shown like submit uh, they haven't completely fallen apart yet but they've shown some signs of like falling apart they struggled a bit against the Ravens they lost against the Chargers and then they lost against the Seahawks and like then they played the Raiders, but they were a horrible team. So that win yeah. is not surprising at all. So like the past few games, they've already kind of showed that there's some cracks in the team. And I think it's really going to come out in the playoffs, just like it always does when it's Andy Reid. They only, lost to, they only lost to four playoff teams. Just like a you know, fun fact. I mean, I'm not trying to derail you or anything, but. Well, yeah, it is a fun fact. They, they didn't lose many games overall at all uh, all season. They played really well yeah. this season. It's just towards the end, again, they started to show cracks in the team. Uh, like right, The only okay. team that they really didn't struggle was the Raiders. The last Out of the last four games, they didn't struggle against the Raiders, but it's the Raiders. Right, right. It's, and it's... Uh, so it's a rookie quarterback plus an Andy Reid team. It just doesn't really look... Of that good for the Chiefs and in the Colts, it's a uh, they played really well against the Texans, which stinks, honestly. Just screw that game, yeah. But they, the Colts, there they looked really good, and Andrew Luck has definitely has more experience than uh, Patrick Mahomes, and the team's looking. Uh, like a well-rounded team right now, especially with that offensive line protecting Luck. As right. long as that offensive line can hold and protect Luck, this should be another uh, good win for the Colts. All right. But uh, it might be closer than the Texans game. Okay. 
do you have any anything else you'd like to add or uh not right now all right so i'll go to a couple of your points um you did bring up the kansas city secondary being bad right and and andrew luck's going to shred that to pieces uh yeah no, that's not- Oh, you yeah, don't. Yeah, the secondary is bad. The secondary. Yeah, for is the bad. Kansas City's defense is pretty bad. I'll give you that. Um, I'll also give you the offensive line is going to be able to neutralize the um, any kind of pass rush that the uh, Kansas City Chiefs might have with their defensive lineman Jones. But I'm pretty sure Kansas City is still going to walk away with this game, and I think that boils down to a couple of things. Um, I would say home field advantage, but that means nothing um, when you're at Arrowhead. Um, They've had a, I think they have a six game losing streak at Arrowhead. Um, They have the league MVP. Everyone's been telling me all year, oh, Rob, he's the MVP. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Well, all right. Well, now we're going to see what the MVP can truly do. I also think that the Chiefs are a smarter team than people give them credit for. So I think they're going to be playing with an adjusted offense, which it, when I when I say adjusted offense, I mean uh, to the what I mean by that is all year long we've seen the Chiefs and how they play football: big plays, home run ball, get the ball 20 yards down the field at a time, and score in as little time as possible. And what that does is it puts the defense back out onto the field. Their defense isn't that good; they give up points, and that's there's basically they had the ball less than their opponents this year. So they lost the time of possession overall this year, and in those four games, they lost it significantly. Now, I think Andy Reid is a smarter coach than we'll give him credit for. They have a good offensive coordinator. They have offensive assistants. If somebody didn't realize that the Chiefs need to extend their drives to about eight minutes, you know, which they can. They can do five, six, seven-yard plays at a time with relative ease. They have three all-pros on their team in Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Tyreek Hill. Would be four if uh, Kareem Hunt didn't get himself in trouble. Uh, so, basically, I think the Chiefs are going to adjust the way they play offense. Keep the ball away from Andrew Luck. Keep the ball <clears throat> in the hands of the MVP, which is going to be, obviously, Patrick Mahomes. Even though I don't like it, it's going to be Mahomes. They're going to keep the ball in his hands, make them eat clock instead of the Colts getting the ball and beating down on their bad defense. What's the best way to stop a good offense? Keep them off the field. What's a good way to counteract a bad defense? Keep your defense off the field. Keep your ball in the very capable hands of your offense. And you can walk out of Kansas City with a big old W. Go home, rest up for the incoming Patriots when they beat the Chargers. And then you're hosting the AFC Championship game. Of all the second-year quarterbacks who are making their first-year starts or rookie quarterbacks, any any quarterback making their first-year start in the playoffs, I have the most confidence in Mahomes. He seems to be able to play in big situations. If he struggles, I think it will only be for the first half, which I kind of expect he will. Then they'll come back. I expect this to be a very close game, like a 31-28 to or even a 35-38. It'll be a shootout. And if it comes down to a shootout, like both defenses just get thrown by the wayside, which is very possible to happen. You know, like say, say, say they don't shorten their offense, right? You know, mania, like how I was yeah. saying, say they don't do that and it becomes a which shootout. They will. Yeah. If, if they don't do that, who do you trust more in a shootout? I trust the Chiefs. They can score a lot of points on you. And um, I don't know if the Colts can keep up pace. As hot as they are, it, it's T.Y. Hilton and Eric Ebron that can catch the ball. So... In a shootout, I like the Chiefs, and if they can change their offense just a little bit and play short ball instead of home run ball, I like the Chiefs. I, I think in any situation, they match up a little bit better, other than the fact that they have a worse defense. I, I like the Chiefs winning that game, so that's all yeah. I have to say about that. If they shorten yeah. up their offense, they'll win, or if it comes down to a shootout, I think they have the personnel to win. Those are why I think the Chiefs win. Yeah. Well, and Andy Reid knows he's got to do that. So yes, I know Andy Reid. Uh, Andy Reid really is a smart quarterback. Uh, not a quarterback. He is a smart coach. Yeah. Uh, but it's like Patrick Mahomes. He's. Uh, he's been. Uh, he's still young, and he's basically one of the quarterback that just wants to throw down the field. He wants to show off his arm. 
the rocket throws. Yeah, but he's extremely think, coachable. He's probably he would probably okay. Hey Patrick, we need you to throw it uh, five or six yards and keep the drive going. All right, because that's how Patrick sounds. He's got a weird voice. All right, coach, and then he goes and does that. So this, I guarantee, he knows what he has to do. They know they have to keep their defense off the field. Short play. Well then. Dump it off to Travis Kelsey for six yards. Throw it to Hill for screen plays. Okay. Well, as long as Patrick Mahomes keeps his uh, mistakes minimal, I can see the Chiefs winning. But I, I, I don't know you if see, he's going to be see able him, to do you that. See the, you see a struggle coming. Yeah, I see a struggle coming. You, ju you just gonna... don't trust first year starting quarter. You just don't trust a quarterback's first start in the playoffs, which is fine. You have every. Um, piece of ev evidence working f in your favor. Jared Goff's first right, start was bad. Every single first. Trubisky's, yeah, every single... Lamar's, um, even uh, Prescott, who had a good second start uh, last week against the uh, uh, Seahawks. He had a bad first start in the playoffs. All of them do. It's, it is what it is. Unless your name is Tom Brady or Russell Wilson, you struggle in your first year in the playoffs. Yeah, Tom Brady. I think uh, Tom Brady went all the way to Super Bowl his first year and then all the others yeah him and Russ are the only two that did that shit as a set I think Russ did it as a rookie or a second no second year starter and the same with uh Brady he was a, it was his first year starting second year in the league so that's why Brady didn't win rookie of the year that year by the way everyone's like why didn't Brady win rookie of the year when he like won the Super Bowl well he was a second year player Martin. yeah he was a second no, he, year yeah so he was, Most rookie, people he was a fourth string quarterback. Yeah, he was. He almost got cut. <laughs> Imagine. Anyway, um, so I have nothing really left to say about that. Chiefs should win. Should set up the AFC Championship game in, <clears throat> you know, in your in the area. You know, it'd be crazy is if both the wild card teams won. <laughs> who, oh, gets, that would be, who gets the home that game? That would be crazy. That would be crazy. It goes to the highest remaining receipt. Could you imagine if the Chargers hosted the wild card game? <laughs> oh, man. Th that would be great, like, payback for you're the You're predicting that. that. By the way, you're predicting that. You're yeah. predicting the AFC Championship game will be in Los Angeles between the Chargers and the Colts. <laughs> don't you hate that you took these sides? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. Okay, all right. So that's what I don't get why a lot of people online like like commenting on my thing. They're like, yeah, the AFC Championship game is going to LA. Really, you think that? Thinking picking the Colts <laughs> and the Chargers? That's what that's what you're saying. And you think that the championship game is going to be played in New Orleans with the yeah? Okay, everyone just I know why everyone's picking against the Patriots. It's because like they want to see them lose, even though you know everyone's like, oh. they're well, do you know what the main argument against for the reason that the Chargers are going to win the better roster, right? That's the main argument. The Chargers got a way better roster, right? That's why they're going to win, right? Yeah. Well, it's yeah, I it's basically like a better roster. I'm, no, just really fast, right? It's the quickest reason yeah. is the better roster, much better roster, right? And that's 100% yeah. of the reasons why the Chargers are going to win. That's what everyone says. They have a better team, better roster, better record, better players. Right? That's part of it. Yeah, that's part of it. So, why isn't that same argument used in favor of the Los Angeles Rams over the Dallas Cowboys? See, I'm leading into the next topic, Mania. Uh. Because everyone seems to think that the Dallas Cowboys are going to beat the Rams when the same argument that they're using for the Chargers beating the Patriots can be applied to the Rams beating the Cowboys. I'm going to go first on this one. Um, okay. So when when you hear these Cowboys fans saying, "Oh, we're gonna beat the Chargers, or we're gonna beat the, uh, we're gonna beat these stupid fucking, uh, whatever they're called, um, the the, the Rams. Rams, the Rams, um, we we're we're just gonna beat them. We're, we you know we're momentum's on our side. Um, and then they talk about, and then in the same sentence they'll bring up how the Chargers are gonna beat the Patriots because they have a better roster. Newsflash, Dallas fans, if you say that the Chargers are going to beat the Patriots because their team is better, better roster, better players, better coaching, guess what? The Rams are going to destroy your team because they have a way better roster, better team, better players, better coaching, better everything. 
They're a better team than you. And if you think that the Chargers are going to beat the Patriots because of the roster difficulties that the New England Patriots have compared to the Chargers, you know, Chargers are going to beat them because bad roster for the Patriots or better roster than, you know, what, you know, what I've been saying. You're not actually picking the Cowboys to win this game, much like I am not. I think the Rams are going to dominate the Cowboys by a tune of like 30 to 14. And I think that for two reasons. Number one, they have a far superior offense to the Cowboys. Give me Gurley all day over Ezekiel Elliott. And 100% give me Jared Goff, uh, Robert Woods, Everett, and uh, uh, Brandon Cooks over whatever the Cowboys throw at me. If the game becomes a shootout, 100% the the Rams are going to win that game without even trying. I don't even want to think of the Cowboys in a shootout. That's embarrassing. Um... Oh, they had a shootout against the Giants. Congratulations, you scored 30 on the Giants. That was your best game with points this year. Pathetic. Um, The Rams can score 50, and they've done it. They can score 40 pretty easily. They've done it, and then they stop scoring. So hopefully they don't run it up on you if it becomes a shootout. Um, And then if if it's a close game, I personally believe 100% that the Rams have the most freelancing defense in the NFL. They all want to sack the quarterback or make an interception and take it back to the house. So they get burned on plays occasionally because they're going for the big sack or for the big interception. And that's, that's you know, prototypical of a star lace defense like the players they have. Sue, Donald, Peters, Tlaib. You know, you, know who, you know all their history, except Donald. He's a great player. He's just a sack specialist. Um... I think they do that in the regular season, and then I think they all realize the stats don't matter anymore. This, all, the, all that matters is winning the, these playoff games and getting the trophy. And then we can go back to freelancing in the regular season. We're trying to pad our stats, make our career numbers look good. Right now, that doesn't really matter. What matters is getting to the, getting to the Super Bowl and hoisting the trophy. And that tends to bring these kind of players together. And God may God have mercy on the souls of the Dallas Cowboys players if this team comes together and plays as a strong defensive unit. They're not going to be able to run the ball if Sue and Donald decide to actually go and play run defense, not just let's sack the quarterback or take the playoff. Um, good luck throwing if Peters and Tlaib actually play shut down corner like they can, which Tlaib has a history of in the playoffs playing very shut down uh, corner if you I mean, for Denver, he played very well. For the Patriots, he played very well. So, yeah, that's uh, history shows these kind of players do that in the playoffs. They drop the uh, freelancing and play as a unit. I like that. Um, and, yeah, and I think if it becomes a shootout, the Rams are going to win anyway. So for those couple reasons and the fact that no one in the Cowboys nation actually thinks they're going to win, I think the Rams are going to win this game 30-14. to 14. Also... Again, if you think the Chargers are going to beat the Patriots because they have a better roster, you cannot also simultaneously believe the Cowboys can beat the Rams because the Rams have a better everything than the Cowboys. So, by your own logic, the Patriots won't can't beat a better roster and the Rams won't lose because they have the better roster. Sorry, Cowboys fans. Better, better hope the Patriots uh, actually win and can overcome their deficient roster or else your team is doomed. This game will take place on Saturday night in Dallas, or in Los Angeles. Home field doesn't really matter. Um, this is just random facts before I say Mania. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm out. I, I'm out of things. I said my two points. Um, I think the defense has come together as a unit, and that will just that'll be too much for the Cowboys. Um, I don't trust their defense. They've given up 25 points a game for over the last four, and they also gave up 20 to Seattle. Um, yeah uh that's yeah i'm pretty sure that's what i got um i don't trust their defense it's trending in the wrong way um and i trust uh i trust the rams defense because the history of some of the players of playing better in the playoffs um we're playing as more cohesive units uh sue i don't think he's been in a playoff run i don't know um but yeah so for everything i said rams win go ahead sorry all right. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, though. The Rams, uh, they may have like a what you call a better roster, uh, but uh, they've been struggling quite a bit whenever they end up playing a a playoff game uh, team. Like they lost against the Bears. They lost against the Eagles. 
and they lost. They weren't trying the that hard in those games. They already had the second seed locked up. And against they the lost, Saints, uh, yeah. Most teams have lost to the Saints. Did they? No, uh, no, the Cowboys beat the Saints. Yeah, Thursday on a crazy game and a Thursday at home. This game isn't in Jerry World, and it's not Thursday F on a Thursday. No, it's not in Jerry World. The Cowboys do do worse on the road, but it's not exactly like they'll be on the road. They have some, they have quite a few fans right uh, around in that area because of uh, the training camps there. So they, so it's not like they have all lost all home field advantage, which is kind of why home field doesn't really matter there for the Rams because there's a lot of Rams fans, there's a lot of Cowboys yeah. fans. It's uh, that's true. It's a. Uh, Will be an interesting game. And uh, ZT, either back, the, the Cowboys, they played really well. The offense did really well against the uh, Seahawks, as well as they again against the struggling. The Rams, they haven't been as hot lately. They've they beat the Lions, wow. And they beat the Cardinals, wow. And then they gave up 32 points to the 49ers. Wow. They won. It's, it's like, they, yeah, they won, but so 49ers, going. Cardinals, and Lions, that's not that impressive. Like, sorry about your Lions, but beating them is not that impressive. Did, where did they beat them? At, in Ford Field? Yeah. In Ford the, Field. So that shows that the Rams can actually win on the road, unlike the Cowboys, who are 3-5. and five. Who are 3-5. and five. But the Cowboys Rams didn't, didn't even lose five games this year. Ha, dude, no, I'm sorry. I, I gotta stop. It's not my turn. <laughs> no, they didn't lose five games. But the Cowboys, they have a rhythm going, and they just need to keep up this rhythm. The Cowboys, uh, I think they will be able to figure out how to play on this world. This is like a not really a one of the biggest tests for them, but it will be a test. They because, uh, and I think it will be kind of like the Astros in 2017. They learn how to play on the road. And they'll be able to take them. That role-playing game will be able to take them all the way to the championship game. Okay. Because that's like everything. They figure out how to play in the role. They run the ball, get run the clock down, and again, they get the early lead again. Uh, especially if they get the coin toss and they get the ball, they'll be able to run down the field and get the first point. And then you the, think that will actually will matter to... against the Rams, who can score at will? Score at will? Yes, it will matter. The Rams. Uh, except for the recent uh, they struggled against the Bears defense they do struggle against pretty good defenses and the Eagles they didn't get up to 30 they only went to 23 they went to 31 against the Cardinals recently and 48 against the 49ers again not that impressive against the Bears and the Eagles uh, the, Ram the Rams 48 is not struggled. impressive against the division rival on the road Division rival on the road where the Seahawks lost. No, that was a home. That was a home game. Oh, that they was still a home game. forty-eight points isn't impressive. Not they quit, against they the quit, Niners. They quit scoring in the third quarter. <laughs> like I, don't, I think they scored a field goal in the fourth quarter. That was it. They quit in the fourth. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that team can score at will if they want to. And the and the Forty Niners don't have a slouch defense this year. Most of their games they only lost by like a touchdown or two it wasn't that bad they just couldn't score any points but I, I mean, i'm sorry i interrupted your turn again yeah it's okay the you know the cowboys they uh they have a, they're just doing Dak prescott even though he's not the greatest quarterback he is doing better uh than he has been in the past uh they trusted him in the Giants game. Yeah, it's the Giants game. They wanted to shoot out against the Giants. They're not really that impressive. But like I said, that was a good confidence boost for Dak Prescott and the Cowboys team. And in beating the Seahawks was another good confidence boost. And it's Dak Prescott. He's, again, not the greatest quarterback, but that confidence boost will help him in his game against the Rams. Zeke Elliott will be able to run the clock down. They'll be able to get points when they, when they need it. They didn't score at well against the Seahawks, but anytime they fell behind, they needed to score. They went right down the field and scored. So they can score when they want to, just like the Rams can. It'll be, but again, 
it won't be a complete shootout because the Cowboys will be able to control the clock and run that clock now. They'll keep their possession uh, as much as possible, tire out the Rams' defense, and then keep their defense off the field. Uh, to where they're not as tired on the field, they will they'll be able to play hard. In the Cowboys' defense, yes, they've been struggling a little bit, but it's still a really, really good defense. And as they tire out the Rams' defense, the Rams' defense won't be playing as well, and the Cowboys will still be playing really well throughout the entire game. All right. That's fair. I've already pretty much given all my um, counter-arguments while you were talking. Yeah. That was my bad, man. It's a little rude to okay. me. A little rude. But, um... I think it, I, I think the fans will like that, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's part of what it's supposed to. You're supposed to interrupt me sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's yeah, all right. I got... We're getting there. We're getting there. Yep. All right, man. Um, so that was, I guess, so you're going to be going uh, with the Cowboys. And, uh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the Sunday 1 p.m. game, which will be taking place in Foxborough, Massachusetts. And the host, of course, will be the New England Patriots and the visiting San Diego Chargers. Conditions right now say it will be clear and freezing cold at about 27 degrees. Um, so... Mania, I guess this is actually your turn to go first on this one. We're going to do this. I, uh, you go, I go, you go, and then I and then I'll do the last one. So go ahead and give your pick and who you think and how you think the Patriots will lose for whatever reason. Okay, well, go ahead and Patriots... disrespect the best quarterback and best coach in NFL history. Uh, let's what see you what you got. Loads? The loads, the luckiest of all time, the greatest of all time. The loads, the luckiest. Okay, the Patriots. Um, luck happens one Tom time. Brady. Luck happens once, not five times. Just saying. Yeah. Well, if you go nine times, luck does end up happening. Couldn't happen five times. You make it into the playoffs over and over again because of a da- bad division. Yeah, uh, you'll have a still winning in the champion. who's still winning in the playoffs. Oh wait, that's the New England Patriots. The Patriots. This year, we're not sure if they're gonna win. Uh, the, again, the Patriots. Uh, they lost their best receiver. Uh, they have been looking really like themselves. Uh, they've been. Tom Brady has uh, slowly been doing a little bit worse, uh, especially starting last year, and it's again. I do respect the Patriots a little bit because of what they've done, and especially with uh, the fact that they have always beat up my team. It's like I can't disrespect them too much. It's just a little... They are a good team, but Tom Brady will hit the age at some point. The question isn't if he will. The question is when. And I think we'll start seeing it more, definitely more this year, and then we'll see it again. Uh, he'll do a little bit worse next year. He's He's... Been on a little, and this game will show it. He's not, is it? He's not going to be able to throw down the field at all in the snow. Uh, but honestly, neither will Philip Rivers. Like if they, that, that'd be like one of the hasn't stopped Brady in the past. <laughs> it'll be a dumb play. Uh, it'll, it'll be freezing cold unless, um, if it's not snowing, you may be able to throw the ball down the field. But like, it's not really going to be one of the main plays. And uh, the Patriots will have to rely not as much on Tom Brady because uh, he's only going to really be able to do the short throws in the cold. He's only going to be able to do the short throws because the receivers aren't that good. He's only going to be able to do those short throws. So if the Chargers are able to adjust their defense for the short throw, make sure that they, the players can't get down uh, the field after the catch or make sure they don't catch the ball at all, it's, it's going to be looking pretty good. Uh, Brady's... It's going to be a challenging game for Brady. And then so they're going to have to rely on the short throw. They're going to have to rely on the run game, which I think they only relied on the game like once this entire season. So it's like not really that proven. Like they did well once, but that doesn't really mean anything. Does Will they be able to do it well, do a rushing game well again? And then the Chargers, I think they have they, they have a pretty good rushing yeah, Hello? they have a pretty good rushing game, 
Yeah. And they'll be able to run the ball. They'll be able to throw the ball short. It'll definitely be extremely challenging for Philip Rivers, but he has the experience. And I think he's going to, again, be playing with his heart out because I think this is going to be one of his last chances for a Super Bowl. And so he's going to be playing with his heart out. Uh, Brady's going to be playing with his heart out, but he's not going to be able to do as well because he's, again, he's not doing that well this year, except for it's just the whole thing is Brady. He's a great quarterback. He's able to play this long because of his football IQ. He's really smart in doing the smart plays. But then all the players, he doesn't have good players like at all anymore. He doesn't, he's doing worse than he has. He's uh, did not that smart Ross plays. Is no different than 2015 when they beat the Falcons. Yeah, Play. he's done. Yeah, this year he's done really, really dumb throws. He threw down the field for easy interceptions this year. Easy interceptions. Oh, they happen. Yeah, but that doesn't really normally happen with uh, Tom Brady. Tom Brady normally does smart plays. He threw Those... less pit. He still had a great year. I take him over ninety percent of the quarterbacks right now. Straight up. Yeah. Take him over 90%, but not 100%. No, because he's 41. I would take, uh, obviously, I would take somebody like a Mahomes, Andrew Luck. That's probably it. Yeah, yeah well, Brady as Brady is on his uh, decline. I think he's already past his peak. So I, sadly, he's not. And I think. Well, yeah, that's clear. The last, the last Super Bowl appearance the Patriots were able to get out of him, I think, was last year. And. The Texans, and if I thought the Texans were going to beat them, the Chargers appear to be a better team than the Texans. So the Chargers should be able to beat the Patriots there. They, and they have a better secondary, which again won't matter too much, but they'll be able to keep the short, they should be able to keep the short passes uh, low, uh, can't run down the field. As long as they keep the short passes in check, the Chargers and the running game in check, which the Patriots haven't really proven they have a running game yet. They went for the 270 really against good. Buffalo. Yeah, like like I said, they did one good game, but one game... Oh, no, they've rushed all season like that. They have had a good rushing attack this year. Sony Michelle, Rex Burkhead, and James White. That's a good running backfield. They have a great running game in New England. Just, yeah, with, yeah uh, just, just not let you forget. It, it's it's just under what the Chargers have. I mean, and that's only because Melvin Gordon's playing. But he's all banged up, and that kind of brings it down a little bit more even. But I'll say that in my – it's not my turn. Yeah, yeah the Chargers, they, they have a better rushing core, and he may be a little banged up, but he should be – but he'll be able to play – the the rushing game should be able to be still be better than the Patriots. And the – and the deep throw won't really matter that much. And the Chargers defense, I think, is a little better than the Patriots. Uh, Malcolm Butler is a little bit overrated. Uh, Butler doesn't just got play that. for the Patriots. Not anymore? We have probably the best corner in football, which is Stephon Gilmore, if not one of the best. And then we have the McCourty twins. We've also got Patrick Chung. We have, we have an under, Do you know the Patriots have the seventh best scoring defense in the NFL? Just a little fun fact. We're also number like eight overall in total or nine or ten in team defense. Just, you know, we quietly snuck up there and we trended way up at the end of the year. Nobody did anything against us 10 this season after that Miami meltdown. Even the Steelers only scored 17 on us. So, just a little fun fact. Just a little fun fact. Yeah. Patriots, uh, I just think that. Because Brady's, uh, the Patriots are really not as good as they can be without Brady, and I think because Brady's on his downfall, they're not going to be able to do well, like okay. at all. Are you done? Yeah, it's mostly right. Brady and his downfall. Okay, so this man thinks the Chargers, much like everybody else, thinks the Chargers are here to finally do it, to end the evil empire. For the dynasty to, to be ended. And I'm here to inform everybody that they're wrong. The dynasty will end when Tom Brady says, Hey, I'm done playing football. See you guys. And that'll be the end of the Tom Brady dynasty. Um, number one, Philip Rivers has never beaten Tom Brady. 0-7. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0.
two and eight versus yeah, the Patriots have, all time. The Steelers haven't beaten, but then they won this season. Like I said, that's they've beaten the Patriots uh, before. It's I'm just saying though, like um and um do you know it's funny? Rivers has beaten the Patriots when Tom Brady missed the 2008 season. So <laughs> he can't beat Tom Brady. It's just one of those things. And yeah, so you bring up the Pittsburgh who plays them yearly. We play the Chargers every so often. So it's not like they have any tendencies. They know what Tom Brady is and what he can do, but it's harder to game plan for a guy when you don't see him every year. Um, 0-7, oh, he can't. He has troubles figuring out the Belichick and Brady combination. He doesn't know how to quite beat it. Uh, I think his young coach is going to struggle with trying to figure out how to beat Belichick in the playoffs. So we have a huge coaching mismatch. We can start right there. Coaching mismatch, yeah, Belichick, quarterback mismatch. What? Yeah, the, uh, Belichick, you've even admitted yourself that Belichick isn't... It doesn't matter, uh, dude. On building a... No, he's the best coach in NFL history. You, <laughs> you can say what you want about... I can say what I want about him. But when you talk about Coach Belichick, you address him as the greatest coach that's ever existed. Name a better one. Yeah. I'll wait. I'll wait for a better coach. And then I'll laugh at you for saying that. Uh, what was the coach at, um... <laughs> that's not, that's funny. Had. What was the coach Montana had? Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh? He was well, only good because he had Montana. <laughs> and Steve Young. And Jerry Rice. Bill Belichick yeah, has won Super Bowls with the likes of Julian Edelman and Chris Hogan as the top receivers when they beat the Atlanta Falcons. Which is weird. I'm going to do something here really fast. Um... The Patriots have a worse roster than the following teams, would you think? The Falcons, who they played in the Super Bowl. Yes. The ones that could totally uh, collapse the game? I'm just saying they have a worse roster than the Falcons, right? A significantly worse roster, other than the quarterback yes. and the coach. Um, then the Seahawks, same story. The Legion of Boom defense versus Tom Brady and the Patriots. Only difference, um, the Seahawks, much better defense roster than the Patriots only difference being the quarterback and coach were far superior we can go all the way back to the Carolina Panthers Super Bowl against the New England Patriots or no Philadelphia Eagles Terrell Owens Donovan McNabb fucking Bryant Westbrook this was a great defense Brian Dawkins was a part of it I believe all right um a great Eagles team better roster than the 2006 Patriots that's debatable Major difference, Brady and Belichick. 2004 Super Bowl, when I became a fan, when they faced the Panthers. No doubt the Panthers had a better roster. The defense, kind of debatable. The Patriots were not the favorite. Guess who won? The better coach and better quarterback. Tom Brady's first Super Bowl. Shittier roster than the Rams. No debate on that fucking... Can we not even debate the, those two teams? The Rams, greatest show on turf versus the Patriots. Only difference is better coach, better quarterback. Now... What is the difference in this game? It sounds like a lot of these other games that the Patriots were supposed to lose. They had no chance to win these games, right? Um, yeah. The only people who thought that we could win were Patriots fans were crazy. As they said in the Falcons game, Brady's too old. He's too broke down. He doesn't have it anymore. He doesn't have his fastball. He doesn't have it anymore. Brady's done. Belichick's done. Oh, okay. They orchestrate the greatest comeback in Super Bowl history. Um, yeah. Eventually, eventually so, people so will be right about we, we hear it all. We hear it all. We hear it all. This is going to be the end. This is going to be the end. They don't have the roster. They don't have the roster. But what happens? They win. Patriot Tom Brady looks dominant when they win. And yep, then they what? Lost against the Eagles. They lost Tom against Brady Eagles. set a Eagles. Super Bowl record for yards thrown for. Tell me he's falling off. Tom Brady at this out. stage in his age, he may have not had the best numbers this year, but guess what? 11-5 and five would have won the one seed if it wasn't for a fluke play that happens once a generation. It's, that's where he that's put this. That's where the you. Patriots were going to be, the number one seed in the, NF, in the, in the, in the AFC. Yeah. That's where they would that's have a, been minus a fluke play. That's a one play, that's a one play if. Uh, we can go to the Chargers-Chiefs game. If the it doesn't know. No, no dude, it's not the same yeah. play. It's not a same if. Not even close. A fluke play with seven seconds left where laterals happen. That is a fluke once in a generation play. That's why it's already labeled the Miami Miracle. You'll never see that again for 10 to 15 years in the NFL. You won't. And that's why it's a 
it's just, it's just a fucked up play. That's the only reason the Patriots aren't the number one seed. They won that it's game. Because they can't, it's because they can't win in Miami. Yeah, literally. That's it. One game. That's and it's and it took Tom Brady's house of horrors for it to happen. Miami. Don't know why it happens. The flukiest play in NFL history beat the Patriots and knocked them out of the one seed, which is fine. But that's the team you're saying isn't as good as ever. Uh, all these other teams in the NFL don't have the roster. Brady's fallen off. Really? Because from what I look at, he still put his team in position to be the one seed. They are their defense trended inside to the top of ten, like every other Belichick defense ever does. Um, Brady threw for his best game to end the season, so the team is trending in the right way. Regardless, Brady didn't have Gronk in that Super Bowl and had Chris Hogan and James White and Julian Edelman to throw to. Guess what? They still beat the Falcons. And I, I just and you don't, I just don't see how the Chargers get it done. Um, yeah, sure. They have they have a they have the better offense. They have the worst coaching. Um, not in the you know what I mean in comparison. They have a yeah, good offense. Okay. They have the worst quarterback. Um, defense, I don't know. Patriots defense looked really good the last few games. I like them going into this one. Um, they played the Chargers better. They played the Steelers better than the Chargers did, regardless of that they lost. 17 to 16 or 15 was the final, if I recall. So, I mean, who shut them down more? Who scored more? Patriots offense was kind of like weird at that time. But we'll see. When it comes down to it, the Patriots are who they are. Um, it's Tom Brady. It's Foxborough. It's going to be. Yeah, I'm in the middle of talking. It's it's in the it's cold. It's it's Foxborough. It's cold. I, I lost my go ahead. I lost my train of thought. Yeah, yeah, well, the Patriots, they've not going in the right direction, though. In 2016, they were 14-2, and then they uh, won the Super Bowl. So the in NFL's 20... got that. What's that have to do with this year? In 2017, that they doesn't have to do with the last anything to do with this year. Yeah. In 20, and then now they're. That, well, I don't know why you keep bringing up last year's and the years before that statistics. The Chargers yeah, didn't make the, the Chargers went nine and seven and missed the playoffs the year before that. Like, the year before okay. the end, this year, yeah, they, this is the first year, year they've been in the playoffs since 2013, and you think they're gonna win? No, they're gonna choke, like they've always done against Tom Brady and the Patriots. Even if it's not a playoff game, they choke against the Patriots. They've uh, they, they've never had a worse roster than the Patriots outside of maybe 2007. That's the only time I think the Patriots have had a better roster than the Chargers, and they still can't beat us. And now, and also, not to mention, this is going to be two back-to-back East Coast games. So they trained in Los Angeles, went to Baltimore, came home, trained for New England, and now they're in Foxborough. That's fucking exhausting. Not to mention, they're going to be playing in the freezing cold, and they're not a cold-weather team. Yeah, they're 8-1 and on the road, but they're playing against the only team in the NFL that went 8-0 at home. You just don't win in Foxborough. And this year seems to be more of a sentiment of that than any year going forward. I would be, um, every year they say Brady's done, it seems that it comes to backfire on the media, so I prefer you to keep it up and keep saying Tom Brady doesn't have it anymore, they're all done, the Patriots look bad, they don't have the roster to do it, because, you know, we've heard it all before, and (laughs) the results don't change. Until the game, until they lose, they won't, there's nothing to think about that game going any different. 13-2 13-2 and two all time in Foxborough in the playoffs is Tom Brady. And I don't think Phillip Rivers, who is a choke artist in the playoffs, who almost blew the game against a rookie quarterback. You know, that defense almost gave that game away to a rookie, right? You think that defense is going to, if you make those mistakes that you were giving Lamar, Tom Brady will eat you alive. And it won't even be close. It will not be pretty if you let Tom Brady do what Lamar did at the end of the game. Because guess what? He won't get strip sacked. He'll make the throws. He'll beat your team in the final minutes of the game and send you away with a heartbreaking loss. Just ask the Jaguars. Yeah. The didn't they get strip sacked for a loss in the you know, against the Eagles Super Bowl? Yeah, that's last year though. What's that got to do with this year? Again. This year. 
it's it's Brady isn't the same person as he used to be. He's not the same player. That's, that's yeah. He's better than he was last year. He's look what he's done this year with that roster that you just said it wasn't that good. Would have been the number one seed. That's how much. That's how smart and much better Brady is. It doesn't matter right now. And guess what? They couldn't throw the ball against Buffalo. So you know what they fucked around and did? Rush for 280 yards. So go ahead, take away the rush passing game. They'll just run it with three running backs down your throat. It's going to be a long game, and the, it favors the Patriots. If it's going to be long, cold, shitty weather, it's supposed to be clear. So it's just going to be a long afternoon for the San Diego Chargers, in my opinion. 28 20 Patriots win. Yeah. And you're not going to let this up until uh, until they're out of the playoffs. Who's going to beat them? Uh, Phillip Rivers? He's never beat them, so I can say that that won't happen. Then the, maybe the Colts or Chargers? Nah. Not really worried about Andrew Luck. Well, another thing about the stats, it, it'll, another thing is. Brady really is playing against the odds because if he does win and go to the Super Bowl, like it's like you rarely see a team go back to back to the Super Bowl. And I think it's only I can only think of like maybe one time where a team went three times back to back to a Super Bowl. Like it just really Yeah, because they've happen. never had a quarterback like Tom Brady, who was 39, 40, and what will he be this year if he does that? What, 41? Wasn't he supposed to be washed up when he was 38, 37? 39 40 this year man he's been washed up for years and he's just how bad are the other teams in the nfl if tom brady's old washed up ass is getting to the super bowl every year weird yeah it's almost like he's getting better with age because he's getting better with age and that should scare you guys let's move on we've spent a lot of time on this topic okay all right uh, now the final game we have the this is going to be a Saturday, uh, Sunday afternoon game, which is going to be 4 o'clock, right after the conclusion of the Patriots and Chargers game. We have the Eagles and the Saints. My bit will be a lot shorter, I assume, than yours will, because I don't have much to say on this game, because it's probably going to be the Saints winning. But I pick an upset. I've always been picking this game. You can see my picks video. This isn't even for the sake of the show. I got the Saints, uh, Eagles winning on an upset, 31-28. to Number one reason, only one reason I'm going to discuss, Nick Foles is Jesus Christ. You've never seen the two people in the same room. Don't tell me you have because you haven't. He's beaten everybody. Nobody can stop Nick Foles. And until somebody beats him, I don't think anybody can. That's my personal philosophy. He's 4-0 with Doug, uh, Doug Peterson. Um, he wasn't supposed to beat the Patriots. He did. Wasn't supposed to beat the Bears. And he did. Wasn't supposed to beat the Vikings. And he beat the shit out of them. Um, he, his, he's, his, he's not supposed to win any games and they can't stop the man. He's an absolute unit. So you can't stop Nick Foles. I don't think the saints have the magic to stop St. Nick Eagles win 31, 28 on an upset. I don't really have much to defend myself here. So whatever you got to, whatever you got to put into it, go ahead, man. <laughs> okay. Well, that was, that was a minute and five seconds of me just going, it's Nick Foles. He's magical, and I'm afraid of him because he beat the Patriots. Next. I hope the Saints win. I hope you're right. You better fucking convince me, dude. Okay. Well, I have the Saints winning, and honestly, I'm probably going to be right with most of these games because last week I did do uh, well better than Rob. I went 3-1. and one. You got one game better than me. Yeah, but he still did better, and that's a whole 25% better. But like the the first is the Saints they have a bye this week. So they're definitely well rested. And then second, the Saints will be at home. And they're really good at home in the Superdome. And like the five and oh. Could be five and one. Yes. It's not gonna be five it's not gonna be five and one. They're gonna win all their games in the playoffs. All their games. I, I have them winning the Super Bowl. Oh, so this is just you gotta stand by your team, I see. Yeah, so I got to stand by. I got to No, their Saints aren't my team. But your pick, I'm your gonna pick. Have to, I'm going to have to stand by the Saints here. Uh, and right now, they are arguably the best team in the NFL right now. This year, they are arguably the best team with the, the best roster, the best offense. They don't have the best defense, but it's a 
really good defense uh, compared to what they normally have. And mm-hmm. the Eagles did, they <laughs> have them, uh, they did play well against the Bears. And I did have them winning the Bears. That was my upset uh, last week. And I, and I was right about that. They won. But it was, they nearly choked it at the very end. They nearly gave up that win. All they had, they, they just had to uh, get a score and then run the clock down. They didn't do anything they had they had to do to, make, to guarantee that win. They were like, it was a not a good ending for them. They they got right. lucky. It was like the Nick, what it, what you describe as the Nick Foles magic. It was he, <laughs> right on. It, it, right on. It's it's they did not win that because of skill. They gave up. They nearly choked it. And then the Bears kicker was like, yeah, I don't want to beat Foles. It was the magic. That's yeah. all I can say. It's gonna happen in New Orleans, dude. Nah. All right. Do you have any really uh, thing else, or yeah? It's just to yeah, you. It's it, to most people. This is an obvious blowout for the Saints. Uh, to be honest, it is. It's honest an obvious. Like it's this game's not up for debate. The only reason anyone's debating it is because Nick Foles. That's it. <laughs> That's why if you if you argue the Eagles are gonna win this game, your only argument is we got Nick Foles. So that, that that's it. That's it. It's, the that's Saints it are a better team on market. every every aspect of the ball. They're a better team. It's gonna be a blowout. I didn't mean to cut you off, dude, but like, let's be honest. You know what I mean? And it we're is, at fifty. We're at fifty minutes so far of the show. Actually, believe it or not. Wow, so, we're actually gonna hit an hour for yeah. once. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. That's a lot to edit <laughs> and upload okay. then. Yeah, the Saints. It's going to be a blow. They're a better team yeah. overall. The the Eagles struggle. They it, the All only right. reason why they won is yeah. the magic. It's, yeah, we've already uh, we're, we're done with this topic. Let's move on. Yeah, let's go. All right. Um, basically, since we've already kind of gone long, we're gonna go really quick on this next topic, which is going to be: Should there be uh, challenges allowed on things like pass interference? We're gonna just cover pass awesome. interference. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start this off and say I don't think so. Number one, it will be, I don't know, bore. It makes the game slower. Fucking, it's very subjective. You should not be allowed to penalize pass interference because then you're going to get holding penalties. Um, you're going to get false start penalties being challenged. You're going to get, it opens up a can of worms for every penalty to eventually be challenged. And we don't want that to the point where we're having even like um, coin flips being challenged in the NFL. We don't want the slippery slope to happen. It's something we can avoid. Let's avoid it. Let's just not have this as a part of our lives. I don't care who. Um, I know it's it's for helping the offense. It's or for helping the defense. Kind of a counteractiveness to the um, you know to the super offensive rules. But you don't challenge what the officials' ruling is. That's just how it is. The only thing we should just keep replay as it is. First down, you know, spots on the field, fumbles, turnovers, touchdowns. Yeah, I actually think we should go to less challenges that coaches can even do. To be fully honest, it should all just be booth reviewed. It will take away a useless part of the game that just slows it way down and creates a lot of controversies. And um, uh, I guess that's all I really have to say. Um, Because I I actually agree sort of more with challenging it because it's a pretty good equal. I just had to take the contrary. So go ahead, Mania. (laughs) <laughs> okay, well, uh, obviously the answer for you should challenge is should you be able to challenge that is yes. Uh, and I think I have answers. Like I was going to go on and answer the qu- question without uh, you asking about the whole uh, over challenging because over challenging would become a problem if you the coaches yeah. were able to just challenge here and there and do whatever. Because that would be a problem that would slow down the game way, way too much. Yeah, and just dumb shit. Like... <laughs> Like, so, I wasn't holding. Challenge him, coach. And it's like, ugh, ugh. If you could, so instead of, like, being able to challenge, I think you should, like, each coach should be allowed, like, And they're also challenge. subjective. Like, what, what one ref thinks his pass interference isn't, and then they review it, and it still isn't, and it's like, ah, it's just a nasty, dumb thing, in my opinion. It's yeah. so, it's too, they're too subjective of penalties. It changes too much. There's no consistent scale from ref to ref. So that's why I say no to so I have more of a logical reason. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, um, 
instead of uh, being able to challenge willy nilly, and you should be, it should be like something like you have like one challenge, uh, a half, and it's like it's, it's like a little risky thing because if you challenge it and it rules in your favor, then you get the challenge back. But if you challenge and it doesn't rule in your favor, then you can't challenge for the rest of that half. That should keep the challenging thing under control where they're just not challenging things left and right. Uh, right but it right, should be. Limits. And there's like a, they're like this Steelers and Saints game is like a perfect example of yeah. why you should be able to, because that was like the the one throw that got the Saints into winning position was clearly not pass yeah. interference, and I hate admitting that. And I'm Saints, I mean Steelers, I hate your team, but that should not have been pass interference. So that that was like a game changing penalty, and it was a huge controversial penalty. Yep, yep. And no matter what, you're gonna have controversy in the NFL. So just why not do it to where it's as fair as possible? Yep. All right. I mean that's fair. I mean we pretty much just agree on the same on it anyway. So you want to move on to the final subject? Yes, the Antonio Brown trade. The Antonio Brown trade. All right. So basically everybody knows by now that the Pittsburgh Steelers are now at this point listening to offers for Antonio Brown. That is from the president, Art Rooney, the owners and all that. They're pretty much on board with uh, trading Antonio Brown to a new team. And, um, you know, it just seems like it's not repairable, the situation with the team. So our question to everybody is, who do you think Antonio Brown will go to? We're going to debate. Mania, go ahead and kick it off with where you think he's going to go and why. Uh, I think he's going to end up going to the Dolphins. Like, he's uh, he's a good receiver. He's... Honestly, best in the receiver. NFL. Uh, no, uh, Hopkins is the best. <laughs> Not, no, it's it's Julio. It, it's Antonio Brown. It's I know you're biased, but but, uh, but uh, he's a great receiver. He really is. But he's not worth uh, the money and the toxicity that comes with him. Like uh, he's become a pretty toxic player in the locker room. Okay. Uh, and that's that's got to be because of the Saints. And so I don't think like. And I think a lot of teams see that, so it's not going to be. It's definitely not going to be a team that uh, has them. It's going to be a very desperate team. And the Dolphins, I, they're going to be really desperate next year, especially with the head coach. They've got a lot of wide receivers in Miami. They've got Stills, Albert Wilson, or yeah, Kenny Stills, yeah. Albert Wilson, Danny Amendola, um, yeah, but, uh, Devontae Parker. The They've got the four Dolphins. or five different really good wide receivers. Most of them are just banged up. Hmm. Yeah, but the Dolphins are going to be really desperate in the offensive area next year because that's what the head coach was brought, uh, brought on to do. He was brought on to make the Dolphins' offense really well. They, they're like hiring a defensive one, coordinator as their head coach. Well, they, they brought on the offense. They wanted the offense really well. It was brought, Then they was brought on the offensive coordinator or whatever. Someone, one of the coaches was brought on to... Yeah, that was Gase and he a, failed because he had a bad quarterback. Yeah, he was brought on. And then uh, they, they're desperate for offense. Like jobs are on the line. They need, a, they want the offense good because that's what they ex- they expect right now. That's what I've been reading. They expect. I that's what I kind of looked up. Yeah, I looked up on the NFL thing. They say the Dolphins need a good uh, offense, uh, or else like there'll be jobs on the line, coaching jobs on the line, and wow. so they'll be desperate there. They'll be desperate in the trade. They'll focus on the offense and I, don't, the tra- and- I don't think receivers where they need the help if you if you looked at their depth chart they're really they have really deep receiving core yeah i just think they'll uh, like like they have three or four studs on that receiving core i don't know if they're gonna make the, if they trade for anybody it wouldn't be in my opinion i don't think it'll be brown they they don't need receiving help they need a quarterback yeah, a running back I think they're going to be doing like multiple trades and multiple drafts though. Like they're going to draft a few offensive player, probably quarterbacks. Like even though this isn't an offensive draft, they're probably going to do offensive players in a draft and they're going to be looking for uh, uh, players during the trade. And on, from what I've been reading as well, uh, his projected trade time is going to be sometime, not in the off season. He's projected to be traded during the regular season next year. And I don't think the off, the offense of the Dolphins will be doing uh, that well next year. And I think they'll see that trade and they'll be just so desperate and they'll 
that they'll go for it even though it's like a dumb move it's it's a desperate move and when you're desperate you don't do smart things right well are you good yeah i'm good all right so i disagree i do not think if the steelers end up trading antonio brown it will be nowhere near the american football conference so you can cut out any team that plays in the afc will not be receiving antonio brown so sorry i think the dolphins are out just on that alone now we look at nfc teams who is the most desperate NFC team? There are teams out there with great quarterbacks and a great tight end, a halfway decent defense, a great coach named Kyle Shanahan. Um, it just, they have no receivers. It'd be weird if like a team like the 49ers, you know, the San Francisco 49ers, I think are the immediate favorites to sign or trade for one Antonio Brown. They got the quarterback that is very, you know, they got a quarterback who needs some weapons. They have Kittle. Very great season, set the all-time records for receiving. Good friends with Antonio Brown. Very good connection. Brown will be happy to be traded there. Steel, you know, Steelers, whatever, they're going to trade him. We're not talking about what the Steelers are doing. Um, Brown would fit in in, in in San Francisco. He'd do well out there. He'd have Jimmy G throwing him the ball primarily or Garrett Kittle. So Brown will be happy in San Francisco as the only target, the number one target, the undisputed target. He will be content being the, you know, the king of the offense. Now, a couple other things that will happen if the, uh, all you would have to give up is a second, maybe, and a third round pick, which will be very enticing to the Steelers considering the San Francisco 49ers draft position of being in the top five. I think top three, if not number two. Um, I think they actually might have, yeah, they have like the two or three pick in the draft, the 49ers, so... Very interesting draft position that's very enticing. You offer up the second round pick, you're picking like 36 again if you're the Steelers. Very, very interesting. And then grab the third one, you're picking in the 40s or 50s. So you, that becomes a very interesting um, interesting trade because you have the ammo, you have high draft picks. You don't need much. Your defense is pretty good. Your offense really only needs a fucking receiver for Jimmy G. You already got the tight end in Garrett Kittle. Now, if you end up making the priority is getting Antonio Brown. You have a hundred million dollars or so in cap space if you're the 49ers. You are the favorite then to sign one Le'Veon Bell. Antonio Brown's best friend, free agent. You got money, makes sense. Those two will hook up in San Francisco. And then all of a sudden you have, listen to this, Jimmy Garoppolo, Garrett Kittle, um, or George Kittle or whatever the fuck his name is. Um, Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. Oh. Yeah, that's scary, isn't it? All of a sudden, the 49ers. I forgot, you know. They are a very yeah. good team. They don't need these high draft picks. They're very complete. They can trade, and they still will pick in the top five picks with their first round. Trade the other two picks. You, you can get Antonio Brown. What else are you waiting for? 49ers make sense. They're not in the division. They're not even in the same conference, so it's a safe trade, and you get the cancer gone off your team. So, besides, Juju's better anyway. Just draft another receiver. You're Pittsburgh. You draft like motherfuckers for receivers, so that's what I think. I think he's going to be a niner. Hey. Well, that's... Awesome. And he'll be happy there because he'll be the we number one target. Uh... Number one target, and we could have like our, our watchers like comment where he thinks. This is like one of the most... Um, it could... This uh, probably has like the most answers possible answers so we can have like our watchers comment who th they think that he's gonna go yeah we could do that all right well i'm out of things to talk about today what about you yeah yeah i am too we are we went over an hour which is something new yeah an hour and two minutes so hopefully wow. you guys enjoy our long ass show today an hour of content so thank you guys so yeah. much though for listening to uncontested episode three with robin mania uh, you got anything else, Manny, you want to say, like, uh, before I stop um, recording? Yeah, stop recording. Just go. <laughs> Just stop. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. Leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Comment down below on what you think of the show, if we're doing well, blah, 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 blah. You know the drill. Thank you, guys. Have a great evening. Great day. Whenever you watch this, peace out.